This video is brought to you by Brilliant. This is a nitro engine. It runs on an exotic fuel called nitromethane that it's used in drag racing. Nitromethane is actually less energetic than gasoline, but it comes with its own oxygen, which means you need less air to burn it, which also means you can burn a lot of it. That makes this little guy very powerful. Might not look like it, but this is a 2.5 horsepower engine. If 2 horsepower means nothing to you, just know there was a French car sold up to the 1990s that was called Citroën 2CV, which basically means Citroën 2 horsepower. Does that mean this little guy could power this car? Well, maybe, probably not, because this car doesn't really have 2 regular horsepower. It has 2 French horsepower, which is equivalent to 9 regular horsepower. It's equivalent to a lie is what it is. With all that said, I think moving a car with this little guy might be a tad ambitious. Yes, it would probably move it, but it would be very, very slow. On the other hand, most electrical bicycles run on 1.2 horsepower, if I'm not mistaken. And this little guy has double that. So despite my intuition giving me red flags about what I'm about to say, if I put this on a bicycle, the bicycle should go fast. There's only one real way of knowing for sure. I have a nitro engine and I have a bicycle that my grandfather left me. So the next step is just putting the engine on the bicycle. Actually, the next step is making the engine run. Because despite all my talk, I don't really know how this little guy operates. I don't have an RC car. My grandfather didn't left me that. Left it to my cousin, Tom. Ato. Damn you, Tom Ato. So, I did some research. And by research I mean I read the pamphlet that comes with the engine. And apparently this is a two-stroke engine. Which means that instead of going suck, squeeze, bang, blow, it joins some of those steps together, and in the end you only get two strokes. It also means that for each four strokes, you also get more bangs, so you also get more power, I think. For starters, I need to fill up the tank with nitro fuel, which apparently is only 15% nitromethane. The rest is methanol and oil. More lies. Now I need to use this doohickey to turn on the glow plug and pull on the pull start, I guess. Let's give it a go. Just like my grandfather used to say, when the left gets tired, the right gets fired. Let's go. Getting tired. Oh. Easy. That's a bit too much. <sighs> I think uh, doing it by hand is just too tiring. Or maybe I'm just bad at it. But I think I'm going to disassemble the pool to start and just start it with a drill. Yeah, I'm lazy. What are you expecting? So there's a nexus with what seems to be a ball bearing and a nut. I can work with this. Okay, round two. Now with a drill. Let's give it a go. It was so much easier. I should have started with this. I mean, I'm too out of shape to do it by hand anyway. So, I know the basics of the engine now. I can make it start at least, which is not bad. But I still have a hard problem to solve. You see, the engine has 2.5 horsepower. And a big part of that is because the engine can reach 30,000 rotations per minute, which is a lot. Like, if I apply that speed directly to the tire of the bicycle, I would reach three times the speed of sound. Well, that's not really true because 30,000 RPM doesn't really mean much if the engine is not strong enough to move the bicycle and my post-Christmas body on top of it. And in fact is not strong enough to move me. I should probably lose weight. The engine only has 0.9 Newton meters of torque. And as you can imagine by the decimal point, it's not a lot. What I need to do is gear down the engine because I'm trying to emulate an electrical bicycle and an electrical bicycle normally has about 50 Newton meters of torque, which is basically 50 times more than what I have now. I need to gear down the engine 50 times in speed, so I get 50 times more torque. That's how mechanical power works, I think. Now, if I use regular gears, I will end up with a gear that is bigger than the tire of the bicycle. And that is no bueno. The gear that I have in mind is actually used to tune guitars. It's the worm gear. Worm gears use a screw-like gear with a regular gear to create insanely high ratios. Uh, as you can see, I already 3D modeled one. Uh, I'm gonna 3D print it and give it a go to see if that helps with torque. I've never done that before, so it should be fun.
tail. Using a shoelace, I attach a 2.5 kilogram weight to the worm wheel. Let's see if I can lift the weight using just the tip of my fingers. Yeah, it's pretty easy to lift the 2.5 kilograms with the worm wheel. Um, but yeah, you have a balance. So this gets stronger, but also gets very, very slow. Let's see if the engine can lift the 2.5 kilograms. I mean, the engine is gonna go much faster. Full throttle, idle. Full throttle, idle. Okie dokie. Okay, so the setup is ready. Um, as you can see for the pulleys, I'm using 3D printed pulleys. Uh, they are 3D printed in a special resin from Formlabs called 10K Rigid, which is very strong, so they shouldn't break. Uh, I'm gonna give it a go and see if the engine is able to lift the weight. Let's give it a go. Three, two, one. My worm gear is producing a lot of torque, maybe too much. I think I exaggerated on the ratio. One to 100 might be too much, or maybe not enough. I'm not sure. I don't really know what ratio I should use. Maybe I should figure out the transmission on the bicycle tire first and then move on to the worm gear. Yeah, that sounds like a good plan. Let's disassemble the tire. I'm gonna be honest with you, I haven't disassembled the bicycle in a long, long time. So I don't really know what I'm doing, uh, but I'm gonna do my best. Okay, and now you should come off. Oh, no. Oh, the tire. Okay, now I need to 3D model a pulley to put here. Yeah, let's take some measurements. Ooh, 33.1. You know, there used to be a time not so long ago when cheap 3D printers were not that great. I would have to 3D print the part three times to get a fit. It was a nightmare. But now it's just amazing. I mean, I 3D model the part, I 3D print it, and it's a fit. It works the first time. It's just amazing. Big props to my favorite 3D printers, the Prusa MK4 and the Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon. Well, that seems to be working. Now I need to put another pulley somewhere around here. And to do that, I'm gonna need some support. So maybe an MDF panel here, another one here. I do the entire setup here. And then another belt maybe here where I'm gonna put the engine, yeah. That sounds good, but I do need to 3D model it first. This is a one-way ball bearing. I'm putting it here so the bicycle can go faster than the engine without destroying it. You see, it can rotate in this direction, but not in this direction. Grisol. Because my grandfather used to say, you can never lubricate too much. That's why he ended up with 11 kids. Hello, friendo. As you probably noticed, this worm wheel is much smaller than the other one. Very perceptive of you. 
The reason for that is because I already put a pulley here and here, which reduced the speed a little bit, I don't really need one to 100 ratio. So this one is one to 32, which is good enough. I mean, I can move the bicycle with my hand, which is awesome. Yeah, that's great. Now all I need to do is put the engine here and give it a go. Yeah. We are in the final stretch. Let's go. Okie dokie. The bicycle is ready. So I'm gonna give it a go. Fingers crossed. Let's see. It's moving! Woo! It's moving! <laughs> okay, um, but still, uh, rotating a free wheel might be easy. Let me try and actually move the bicycle. Yeah. Uh, well, it doesn't lack power, does it? <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, yeah. It's doing it. It's doing it. <laughs> Whoa. Stop. Please stop. This is so scary. Yeah, I, I guess it's working. So, uh, I'm a pro at destroying stuff that I 3D print in PLA. And even though that axis, um, and by axis I mean the screw in the worm wheel, hasn't still dis been destroyed, I don't think it's a great idea for me to test the final thing with PLA. So I think I'm gonna over-engineer this uh, and go for something stronger. Solid lubricants is a category of materials that is solid and self-lubricates. I know of three of those. Graphite is the first one and is used in the tip of pencils because it's slippery. Teflon is used in non-stick pans. It doesn't stick because it's slippery. And brass, which is used in bushings. It's kind of slippery, uh, but it's also very tough and it looks like gold, which is cool. I'm thinking of using Teflon for the worm wheel and brass for the bushing. Now, you might be thinking, if the PLA worked, why am I going the extra step just to make sure nothing breaks? Well. To be honest, I got a fourth axis on my CNC machine. I just got it and I really want to test it. Yep, I don't really have a better excuse. As you can see, I already put the parts on the bicycle, the Teflon wheel and the brass screw. All that is left to do now is make my grandfather proud. Let's go outside. I'm gonna go get my jacket. Okay. We are here in the countryside of Portugal, ready to test my nitro bicycle. Will it perform? I surely hope so. I put a lot of hours into this. So this is very beautiful, it's the countryside of Portugal, a lot of grass um, and a cobblestone uh, road, which was not a great idea, I think. I think I should try the bicycle in, on asphalt, yeah. This is creating too much bumpiness, if that's a word. I'm gonna go to try it on asphalt now and see how it does. It's not doing bad, uh, it's just that I think it can do better, so asphalt it is. So, we found some asphalt right there, which is Quite the achievement in this side of Portugal because it's mostly cobblestone uh, roads. Yeah, gonna give it a go. I'm pretty sure I can do a better top speed than before. Let's go! Coming in too fast, I almost lost control of the bicycle. Let me see the top speed. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, we have a new top speed. Nope, it's still 28. I know I can do better than this because I'm not going full throttle. I'm afraid that the engine is gonna die on me. Well, I think it's time to try it full throttle. It 
you can see a lot of Teflon here. But that's fine. I mean, the gear is still intact. The engine is not handling full throttle very well. I think I need to do it more progressively. Yeah. Let's go! Anyway, let me see. Ha! New record. And I don't think I can do better than this. I'm gonna be honest with you. I was not expecting that bicycle to reach 30 kilometers per hour. This project was a lot of fun. I think the big takeaway from this project is the fact that gears are very important for power output. So the more you know about gears, the best the project performs in the end. To be honest, my knowledge of gears was a little bit rusty. So I took a course from Brilliant to refresh my memory. But even if you don't know anything about gears or other subjects like pulleys, math, heat flow, fluid flow, and many others, Brilliant is the best way to learn a new subject. I think the best example of this is mathematics because Brilliant is just amazing at making math more interactive and visual. Brilliant helps you master big concepts in as little as 15 minutes a day. Learn anywhere, anytime, on your phone, tablet, or even computer. To try everything Brilliant has to offer, free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash Integza or click the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% Brilliant's annual premium subscription. By clicking the link in the description, you're not only getting smarter, but also helping this channel. And to that I have to say... I wanna be a cowboy, baby! And remember, tomatoes are disgusting. See ya!